was just checking in social media. Something we haven't talked about, guys, yet. Uh, the Bullseye, at Bullseye Group says, you guys think if the Colts don't make it to the Super Bowl this year, is that it for Pagano? Is, is he gone for sure if it's not a Super Bowl trip? That's the question online. Hashtag horseplay. What do you think? Th that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that question, yeah. to be honest with you. I, I thought it was strange when they didn't give him a contract extension. Um, I mean, that was the big buzz before the game. CBS right. came out and said, hey, look, there's a rift, allegedly, between uh, the general manager, Ryan Grigson, and head coach Chuck Pagano, and then Jim Irsay came out after the game and said, look, there's no rift. I'm not, I'm not into rumor mongering. Or I'm not into the rumors at all. Uh, but in many ways, the Colts, I think, are kind of bringing this on themselves a little bit. Uh, if there wasn't an issue, then Chuck Pagano would have a new contract by well, now. I mean, the issue with the contract negotiation is, I want this, we want to give him this, you know, kind right. of a thing. And, and maybe they really couldn't see eye to eye and they're going to see how the season goes. And uh, a but better, think, better season for the Colts means more money for Chuck Pagano, more years. I a, agree. A, a, a not as good season means less money, less years. Or I, I don't think it's if the Colts win the Super Bowl and Coach Pagano is gone. <laughs> right. I, it's kind, right. kind of hard to imagine a guy like Marvin Lewis who hasn't won a playoff game and he still, still has getting contracts, contracts, contracts. And yeah. we've been to – you know, the AFC Championship and, and gotten better all the last three years, and, and he doesn't have one. I, I don't think that's the case where he's just going to say, the Colts are just going to let him right. walk. What else you got, PJ? Well, it's just some other observations here. Some, just some, some again, back to overreaction Monday. Uh -huh. uh, you know, Scott here at Colts Blue 24. He said the Colts did play better in the second half uh, of the game, so hopefully they'll play better against the Jets. And, you know, I, I feel like that was a theme last year. I mean, how many times were you – Right. Watching Andrew Luck in the third and fourth quarter just having a gunsling to yep. catch up. I well, mean, a year ago, a loss at Denver. Came back Monday night. Uh, a tough one there as well. You go down 0-2, you're thinking, oh, boy. But the, the team still came back and won 11 games last right. year. Right, so. and I agree the Colts played better in the second half. Uh, I think it was a little bit of the Bills taking the foot off the gas a little bit. I mean, they got up 24 nothing after the first drive in the, sec in the second half, and um, they really didn't do much after that. They, I, I didn't feel like they tried to do much after that. I feel like they thought they could just kind of coast to the finish line. The Colts took advantage of, of some things, scored some points, put some points on the board. But once you get down 24 nothing, it's a, it's a three-score, three two-point conversion game. It's, yeah. There's not a whole lot you can do against a defense like that that's not going to let you score quickly. And then, you know, they got a possession in the third quarter. We got a possession in the third quarter. And then they had, what, half a possession? So right. it went so quick. We were so time-consuming trying to get down the field and score on those guys. You got anything else, PJ? Yeah, well, at Shambubu kind of backs that up and says, uh, you know, our division is not exactly uh, top-notch <laughs> through and through. East. So when you think about uh, yeah, the entire 16-game season, yeah, the, at Shambuba said there are those six division gimmies, and despite the typo, forgive him or her. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so that's that's it's good to hear. And, and plus, people, you know, reality check: the Bills are the Bills are good. I mean, it, this good. is this is not. Uh, there were there were statistically, I don't know if you're familiar with 538, uh, the the website that does football, baseball, all kinds of sports stats. They ran 20,000 simulations. Uh, the Bills won 52% of the time. Yeah. Now, I don't a good know, team. I don't know how you'd have time for 20,000 simulations, which is, you know, may or may not be what I'm working on here in Mom's basement. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> we got to remember, the... they were 9-7 and seven last year and, and got better right. in the Roster got better. Yeah, coaching roster staff, got better. Coaching got better. Coaching staff got better. I, I like Rex Ryan as a coach. Yeah. I think he's a player's coach. He lets, lets them go out there, fly around, and have fun. And uh, I do believe the quarterback position got better in terms of what the quarterback can do. Kyle Orton's a good quarterback, but he's limited to being a pocket passer. This guy can do it with his, with his arms and his legs. Um <laughs> Did you see the first play where they had the quarterbacks in the slots and then they motioned Castle? Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a little ridiculous. Well, you, but. You, 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 but that's Rex. But that's Rex, exactly. I mean, but Tyrock can do some things. You know, Percy Harvin can do some things. The jet sweeps and things like that. Carlos Williams is going to be a good compliment to LaShawn McCoy. They're a good team. Charles Clay didn't even have a very good game yesterday. And he's a, he's a, one of the best tight ends Big in the league. Big tight end. Yeah, yeah which uh, goes to back – it goes back to last year's issues, big tight end, the Colts handling all that. So we didn't really see that come into fruition. Maybe we'll see that, though, in the, the coming weeks. So, all right, PJ, is that it? Uh, well, that's about it. Just a, uh, an important stat yeah. to note, the Colts scored 14 or fewer points one time last year. So, yeah, if you're you going to go. have it happen week one, sure, yeah. that's fine. We'll move on. What's for lunch? What's mom making for lunch? Ham and cheese. Mom, 
Ham and cheese. Yeah, I think it's ham Mom, and cheese. Mom, meatloaf. I thought They're, it was uh, meatloaf. Uh, meatloaf. No, that's I want dinner. It now. Meatloaf for dinner. Come on, it's lunch. Oh, meatloaf for dinner. Much I understand. Yeah, meatloaf and a nice, for dinner. Uh, we'll, bottle of Chianti. Sure, yeah, well, uh, perhaps. We'll see. When, when, my, when Brad gets back with my spittoon that he yeah. filled, I'll be, yeah. I'll be a happier kid. Full of <laughs> craft <laughs> beer. Thanks, PJ. Thank you, guys. Nice job. So next Monday, we'll be on location. Uh, getting ready for the Monday Night Football game mm -hmm. as well. It, it, this city does Monday Night Football like no other city. You know, no, I agree. You know, uh, this city does it right. I mean, Indianapolis. You give them a Super Bowl, they do it right. You give them a, a primetime game, they do it right. I th it'll be alive. It'll be electric. I think having our home crowd, being at home, home cooking, always helps. But this is going to be a tough game. This is a, kind of a mirror team to what we just played. Yep. And if we don't play the but game better. right, but better. Yeah. If we don't play the game right and get a lead kind of make them play from behind and so we can get after them a little bit. It could be a long night as well. We're back here next Monday at 1230, the IndyChannel.com and the RGB6 app. And then our Monday Night Football coverage begins during the now Indy at 4 o'clock. For Jim Sorge, uh, PJ, Brad Brown, Rob Powers out in New York, thanks for tuning in uh, this afternoon. The IndyChannel.com and RTV6 app, week one of horseplay in the book. We'll see you next week.